For the past couple of months, anytime I go on social media, half of the posts I see are artists complaining about AI art. And the other half are my friends posting the AI art they made. And the arguments are always one of those two extremes. This is the future, it's inevitable. If you resist, you're gonna be left behind. Or AI art is stolen art. Stop feeding the demon that's gonna replace all of us. It doesn't really matter which side of this argument you find yourself in, the future doesn't look very promising for us. At first I got a bit scared too. We all knew automation is coming. We have been watching as the number of cashiers on grocery stores reduce and the number of self-checkout machines increase. Lots of people even look forward for a time where self-driving cars is the normal, even if that means truck drivers and taxi drivers are gonna lose their jobs. But I wasn't really worried about my job. I'm a creative, I'm an artist. No machine can do what I do by itself, right? When AI art started making to the mainstream, I had to really reconsider things. And those are the questions I've been asking myself. Why even make art? I think this might be the hardest question that AI made, made me contemplate. But I have been reconsidering that even before I first saw AI. You see, social media had its claws on me for a little while. I feel like I lost direction. When I realized I was making fan art of something that I'm not really a fan of. But that was the popular show at the time. And I want to be popular. I want to be a popular artist. I want people to see my stuff. Getting likes feels great. Getting followers feels great. So by seeking attention, I didn't pay any attention. And it took me putting a lot of effort on something that was really popular at the time and I got no attention for it. It was just another post that people scrolled by. Maybe there was a little change on the algorithm and my post got lost. Maybe I missed my window and the show wasn't as popular anymore. Or maybe it was just another soulless, shallow piece of art that not even I care to look at. The reason really doesn't matter. What's important is my takeaway. And my takeaway was, if I'm to put a lot of effort and fail anyways, might as well be on something that I like, some, some project that I'm passionate about, not the latest trend, or be at least something that pays my bills. <laughs> I have only posted one time on social media in this past year, but that doesn't mean that I'm not making art. Uh, I'm working hard on my personal projects, but they're not ready to share yet. Focusing on the process and enjoying it has been way more beneficial to me than posting every single aspect of it. Not worrying about what I'm gonna post today actually made me free to work on th something long term. But I didn't plan on not post anymore, I just eventually stopped. I was working on personal projects that took way longer and they were not ready to show. I was trying to focus the energy I spent on social media and actually finishing my stuff. And one day as I'm scrolling down on, on Instagram and just checking some people's arts, I realized that I'm giving about three to five seconds to each piece of work that probably took three to five weeks to be made. So that's not how I wanted my arts to be seen. And the social media posting aspect of making art, that's the part that has been mostly losing space to AI art, at least at the current model. So I started thinking about things that I make that are not really artistic, things that I don't care about posting or, or, or really sharing, that I just made for the sake of making. Why did I make my dining table instead of buying one at Ikea? To save money? Buying all the hardwood alone was more expensive than the Ikea table I was looking at. I spent more money, more time, more effort, and end up with a less perfect product. And I still don't regret doing it, I actually love it. I love that I shaped raw material into what I wanted. I love the skills that I learned, even the mistakes that I made, the time that I spent. I just love making shit. The final result wasn't the goal. Making it was, the process is where all the fun is. And just asking AI to make your art for you, that's not gonna fulfill your creative needs. Just to be clear, loving the process is not an art thing, it's about everyday life. We all know how beneficial exercising is. And exercise can be done in many different ways. Some people like martial arts, some people like team sports, even just working out, lifting weights. When you do any of those things, you're working out your cardio, you're getting stronger, you're getting more flexible, you're learning new skills, you're meeting new people, you're getting healthier, and as a result, you end up with a better looking body. Now, if the destination, the better looking body, is the only thing you're looking for, Plastic surgery and prosthetics look way more appealing. And by going that way, you might get the looks that you wanted, but you're not getting any of the benefits of achieving that yourself. So I ask, do you like making art or do you like having art made? Does AI art diminish the value of your own art? My gut reaction was yes. Because it's so easy to use and so efficient, it definitely has the potential to. But now I'm not so convinced. AI is already pretty capable of making very technical looking and well finished art. But is the most technical art the most successful art? Look at fine art, for example. Is the most expensive piece of art the most technical? Sometimes it's not even the best looking art. Who painted 
has more to do with the final price than the painting itself. The value of an art piece, it's driven by the name behind it, by that person's personal history, by their achievements, and by how much their last piece of work sold for. Even street art. Everyone heard of Banksy before. We all know his work is very valuable, but it's not because it's very hard to replicate. He uses very simple materials and very simple techniques. And still. Okay, but so far I have been talking about independent artists. What about commercial art? Nobody can deny that digital art has improved the quality and speed of the comic book industry. And still, a lot of the most successful comic book artists out there, they do the first half of their work traditionally because they enjoy the process and because that is also another source of income. Original artwork for a comic book sells for a lot because it's original and it's one of a kind. Making it fully digital would be way easier and faster, but traditional art still hold more value than digital art. But even if you go back to social media and to digital art exclusively, videos of artists showing their work process and how they get things done get way more views than just the final piece by itself. People love seeing someone who mastered their craft working, knowing that a piece of art was hard to make, that it took blood and tears to be finished, that took time, that adds to the value. Can AI be used by artists? You see, because of all the hype around Mid Journey and Lensa and all those current apps out there, we forget that not all AI is made the same. When we demand a strong response from art platforms, we may not realize things are not as simple as they seem. When we say no AI art, it might be clear to us what we mean by that statement, but that statement is very vague. If taken literally, it might exclude some legit artwork in the future. Even if we are right, and I think we are, about the unethical way that machine learning has been acquiring data for the current AI models out there, we can't assume all AI is guilty of it. AI creating art by sampling my work and yours, it's very questionable. <laughs> for sure, but what we've been calling AI is basically machine learning, and lots of tools can benefit from that to, to enhance our artwork. As a 3D artist, my process includes lots of very technical steps. If you get AI to analyze millions of different 3D models out there, get my ZBrush scopes, analyze the shapes, and apply the perfect topology to it, sign me up, especially if you include UVs on it. I definitely don't see the appeal in using AI to generate final images. If AI can be used to speed up the boring and technical side of my job and free me up to enjoy the, the creative and more artistic side of my job, I would love that. I am aware that a good reason why I have the job that I have is because of the technical skills that I have trained for over a decade now. And if I offload that portion of my job to AI, those skills are way less valuable. But I can't help but get a little bit excited about what that means for my personal projects. A good comparison that comes to mind is when Substance Painter first came out. I was really excited about having a tool that automates part of the surfacing workflow. If you don't know what surfacing is, uh, a surfacing artist makes 3D models not gray. Shout out Tyler Figueira. So basically, Substance Painter analyzes the form of your 3D model, gives you curvature and occlusion maps that you can use to automatically position dirt and scratches on the corners of things. And that's pretty amazing, speeds things up quite a lot. Was a true game changer on the animation industry, on anything that uses 3D pretty much. But believe it or not, when this software first came out, there was lots of resistance against it. I heard from multiple veterans in the industry that lots of juniors would lose their jobs that studios, instead of hiring five surfacing artists for a kid's show, that they would just hire one and Substance would take care of the rest. Fast forward 10 years or so, that's not the case at all. The projects didn't get any faster. The surfacing team didn't get any smaller. They still kept all same five people there. So instead of shrinking the team, they increased the quality. I don't think production got any faster. The quality got so high that it might be even slower to achieve that because the bar was raised. We got used to a much higher quality level and now we expect that. Even ZBrush, one of the most used softwares by 3D artists out there, was met with resistance by the industry veterans. So I have some hopes. I hope that the version of AI that sticks around is the one that helps the artist, not the one that replaces it. Now for the unethical way that machine learning has been scraping the internet and using our own artwork without our approval, it could be worse. We do something visual, it's way easier to spot when there are similarities between our work and what AI is recreating. Think of a writer, for example. AI is probably scraping the entire internet, getting all articles ever posted, all books ever published, analyzing all that data and creating a version of it that leaves no traces, because not even the creators can spot the similarities. 
And my hope for that is all the noise that the artists are making, because we can definitely spot, is gonna help shine a light on the whole data acquisition problem, even the ones that can't be spot as easily. But when it comes to visual medias, the way I see it, most major studios are not gonna be able to touch this for now, because the legal consequences of using somebody's artwork without their permission it's gonna to be too sketchy for them, especially if they don't know if it's infringing the copyright of their main competitors or not. And most likely we will. Lots of artists and studios are already taking legal action, making sure our copyrights are protected against AI. By the way, thanks for that. Shout out John Land. Now, if you trace a parallel with the music industry, and no, I'm not talking about Napster, because Napster, Torrents, Grooveshark, those were a piracy problem, not a, not a creation problem. But if you think about how DJs and MCs sample music, now I think it's a true parallel. When sampling became a thing, nobody thought they were doing anything wrong. They were just getting inspired by the creators that they liked and using a little bit of that work to make something different, to make something new. And by combining a bunch of different musics and a bunch of different beats and creating their own on top, they, they didn't feel like stealing because they were, they were not stealing your song. They were using a small fraction of it to create something new until the lawsuits start coming in. Nowadays, if you intend to profit from a music that you create that uses sampling, you better get approval for it. You're either gonna buy the rights to use that section, make a collab, a feature, call what you want. But if you publish some songs that sample other songs and you didn't get permission, you might get in trouble. When you think about it, after all the legal aspects was taken care of, that became a new source of income for musicians. No one was paying for sampling before. After the legal aspect was taken care of, it became common practice to sample and pay for the rights to use that section, and the labels and musicians got a new revenue stream. Now maybe, if history repeats itself, might just create a new revenue stream for us. If they create something like Lensa, that instead of sampling the entirety of the internet or, or stealing artwork from a, from a specific artist, pays for the right to use your art and only uses the art that people have submitted to the platform instead of scraping the internet for it. When somebody goes there to create an illustrated profile picture, they can choose the style of the artist they like the most, and a portion of what they pay for that profile picture goes to the artist. That would be pretty cool. But even if that never happens and Lensa stays on the market the way it is, before AI and NFTs existed, how many people that you know have paid for illustrated profile pictures? I didn't know of any, and now, now I know of too many, except they paid Lensa not the artist. And I know it's not fair that an app is making all the money and not paying the artist, but it's not like those people could afford to pay an artist for the profile pictures. Now, people are getting used to paying for, for illustrated profile pictures. We all know those are all AI generated. Now imagine what the luxury version of that would be. If everybody's paying a few bucks to get a cool illustrated AI picture, the coolest version of that would be paying the artists themselves a bit more, for sure, a lot more, but that's the luxury version. That's the, now, now you have something unique. I know art commissions have been a thing for thousands of years, and I know that people still pay for art commissions, but not the general public. That's a very niche thing. And the people paying for AI art might just make commissions go mainstream. The way I see AI art is to the artist what websites like Squarespace and Wix are to web developers. Most of their clients are individuals or very small business that just need a very quick and simple website, maybe a portfolio. And those clients were not just about to pay thousands of dollars to hire a full web design and web development team. If Wix and Squarespace didn't exist, one of those two things would happen to those clients. They would either not have a website or try their luck with WordPress or something like that and waste countless hours trying to get something not even half as good. My point is the existence of a cheaper way of making it didn't cheapen the proper way of making a website. The other day I joined a work meeting a little bit too early and I caught a couple of the TDs talking about how they're being using AI on their personal work. And I think they are using chat GPT to create some scripts for them, some codes. And the codes are not perfect, the codes are unfinished. They mostly work, but not necessarily what they ask for. But they said that even with all the fixes they had to do and all the revisions they had to do to the code for it to be functional the way they would do, you already saved them 80% of the time. So other people start joining the meeting and the conversation kind of stopped there. But that kept me wondering why TDs and coders and programmers have no problem incorporating AI into their workflow, but most artists that I know are so against it. Their careers are just as much in risk as ours, if not more. But I think there is one main difference. I think as artists, as creative people, we tend to over identify identify with our crafts. We believe that being creative is what makes us special. Meanwhile, those TDs that I mentioned, they're more worried about solving a problem efficiently than taking credit for solving it. What matters to them is that the job is done. Now, what matters for us? 